when we learned about antigen presenting cells, we learned that they can first digest something. Let me draw a dendritic cell right here, my best, my best version of a dendritic cell. Maybe I should draw them simpler than that. A dendritic cell is a phagocyte, and it is an antigen presenting cell. So after it phagocytoses some type of a pathogen, it'll cut it all up, and then it'll display. It'll, it'll present the antigen on its surface on a protein complex. Let me do it in a different color. So it'll, I'll do it in red. On a protein complex here, and the part of the ant pathogen that it cut up, it'll put up right here. And we learned on the antigen presenting cell video that this complex right here was an MHC type 2 complex, where MHC stands for major, major histocompatibility, histocompatibility. Compatibility complex, where histocompatibility just means tissue compatibility. And this was the case on antigen presenting cells. So even B cells did this. So let me draw a B cell. So a B cell, it has its membrane bound antibody, just like that. It actually has many, many thousands of these. I could keep drawing a bunch of them, but just so you know, there's not more than one. Maybe one of these get triggered or get attached to some type of virus or or protein or bacteria floating around. And what it'll do is it'll take this in, it'll take this in and cut it up again and cut it up and do the same thing as what the dendritic cell did. It'll cut up a part of this and present it and present it on, so I made this in pink, so I'll make it in pink right here, a little part of this virus. It'll present it on its surface in, in conjunction with an MHC2 complex. So once again, this is an MHC2 complex. So these professional antigen presenting cells that go out and take things out of the fluid, out of, our, out of the humoral parts of our body, things just floating around, they'll take them in, They'll say, this is bad, cut them up, and then present them on these MHC2. That's what we call them professional antigen presenting cells. Now, it turns out that pretty much all cells in our bodies, all cells, so let me draw just a, a random cell in my body. When I say almost all cells, it, it's actually all nucleated cells. So all cells that have a nucleus in the human body. So the only cells in our human body that don't have nucleuses are red blood cells, which I find fascinating, so that they can have more space for storing hemoglobin. But all nucleated cells in our bodies have another major histocompatibility complex on it, and it's called an MHC1. MHC1, major histocompatibility type 1. And just so you know, these are also nucleated cells, so they're also going to have an MHC type 1 complex on them right here. Now, the interesting thing about the MHC type 1 complex is because it's on every cell in our human body, let me write that down, every nucleated nucleated cell, so pretty much everything but the, the red blood cells have an MHC1, this is where if anything wacky is going on inside the cell, maybe the cell is cancerous and producing crazy proteins. Maybe it's been infected with a virus. Maybe some type of bacteria or some type of weird protein has gotten in here. Any cell in the human body can cut those up, even if it's malfunctioning, and it will present them. So let's say the cell is cancerous. So this cell is cancerous, and it has all these wacky proteins that only cancer cells present that is not normal for a normal cell. That will be presented on the MHC1. Let's say that I have some other cell in my body. Let's say I have some other cell in my body that's a different type of cell. It's nucleated. Let's say it's been infected with a virus. So you have this virus, so it's turning into this virus factory. Those are trying, I'm trying to draw hexagons. Same thing. There are mechanisms in the cell that will take some of the proteins that are that make up those viruses and present them on the MHC1 complex. So it'll present parts of the proteins on the MHC1 complex. So in the case of MHC2, 
This is what triggered helper T cells to say, hey, you know what? I found something floating out here. Here's a little piece of it, Mr. Helper T cell. Why don't you bond to this and raise the alarm system? Now, the MHC1 system says, you know, this isn't stuff floating around. I've been infected. I am cancerous. I am going nuts. You better kill me. I'm a virus. I'm a virus making machine. You better kill me. And that message goes to the cytotoxic T cells. And that's really the topic of this video. So just to make sure you understand the difference. So T cells, they both have T cell receptors. But the helper T cells bond to MHC2 complexes. So if this was a helper T, let me scroll up a little bit. No, I don't have space up there. Let's say that this is a helper T cell right here. It would, it would want to, it's, and it's not all helper T cells will, only the ones that have the right combination, the right variable portion right here, that just perfectly bonds to this combination of an antigen and the MHC2 complex. This type of, 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 of helper cell, of helper T cell, will bond here, get activated, and start differentiating. And the effector versions of them will start raising the alarms. And the memory versions of them will stick around in case this type of thing needs to happen again. With MHC1, instead of attracting a, a helper T cell, it will attract a cytotoxic T cell. So let me draw a cytotoxic T cell right here. So like helper T cells, the T cell receptor, it has a non-variable portion. It has a non-variable portion. But it also has a variable portion that is specific that is specific to this comp this combination of antigen and MHC1. So maybe this this t help this cytotoxic T cell will uh, be involved when this cell goes cancerous. A different this cytotoxic T cell would be of no use or it'll just not it won't be it won't bond to this one that was attracted to a virus it's going to have to be another cytotoxic t cell that does that and the mechanism where we get this variability in the helper t cells or the cytotoxic t cells or you saw in the b cells on their membrane bound antibodies that all comes from when they're in their development stage there's a, once they start to or in the maturation process that the 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 DNA that codes for these variable portions gets shuffled around intentionally. So normally, we're always trying to preserve DNA information. Here, it gets shuffled around. But anyway, once a, a cytotoxic T cell finds one of these guys on an MHC1, remember, every nucleated cell in the body has an MHC1, then what it does is it gets activated. So let's say this guy says, hey, that looks shady. You know, You need to die. So this guy gets activated. And just like all other activated cells, he starts to divide and divide and divide and divide and differentiate. And he divides and he differentiates into memory, just in case you're going to need me again, just in case this type of cancer shows up again, and then also into effector T cells, which are the ones that do the killing, which are the ones that do the killing. So this is an effector. So let's say one of these effectors, they'll also bind to cancerous molecules, cancerous cells, just like this one. So let's say I have another, you know, let's say this cell has split, and there's another version of it right here. That's what cancer does. It divides aggressively. It's producing wacky proteins. It presents the wacky proteins on its MHC major histocompatibility type 1 complex. It displays the wacky proteins. And then one of these effector cytotoxic T cells will be attracted, will be attracted to it, just like that. And I'm not going into the details on what necessarily does the attractions and all the membrane-bound proteins. If you take an immunology class, you'll see more on that. So this is a cytotoxic T cell. And it, it essentially forces this cell to kill itself in a couple of different ways. One, it dumps, it actually can uh, exocytose a bunch of proteins that they're called perforins that make little holes that make little holes in the membrane of this cell and then it has other proteins that it, it releases called granzymes that go in here and essentially start mechanisms that make this cell want to kill itself so the big picture is if you want to just take you know 20,000 feet b cells are very effective at 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 producing so when a b cell gets activated it produces antibodies that kill things that are floating around right once a b cell gets activated it starts producing a bunch of antibodies these antibodies float around, and then they can bond up to viruses, make them ineffective, or essentially tag them for pickup from macrophages or dendritic cells or other types of phagocytes. While 
while cytotoxic T cells, these are used to essentially kill cells that have gone awry. For example, a cancer cell that's presenting weird proteins. Or once the virus has entered the cell, then the antibodies are really of no use. The antibodies aren't going to be able to get into those cells. In that case, instead of cleaning up the virus itself, a cytotoxic T cell will come here and just kill this cell, because this cell is a virus factory. So you have to get it out of the way.